What is value in negotiation? When we evoke value, we typically think of economic value, the terms of the deal that bring more or less resources to each other. Our colleague Jared Curran from MIT has called this aspect objective value. And of course, responsible negotiators need to make sure they create as much objective value as possible. But Jared also proved that there is another aspect, which he calls subjective value, how we feel about the negotiation. And maybe you think, who cares about how people feel? But Jared showed that how you feel, for example, in your first negotiation will impact your second negotiation. Not only will you feel good in negotiation one, but want to negotiate again with the same person and you will create more objective value with this person in negotiation too. Is it not fascinating that maximizing subjective value is as important, if not more important, than maximizing objective value? The first question then is how can we maximize objective value in negotiation? Let us be concrete and identify five moves to create value from high trust to low trust. First, favor a cooperative orientation in terms of information disclosure. Be proactive, balanced, progressive. So what does it mean to be proactive? Prime the pump, volunteer some information about your interests. Then you increase the chance that the other will reciprocate. Balanced, if you share information, then probe Ask questions to get information in return. Be progressive. Start with non-core information, and if the other reciprocates, move towards more strategic information. Second, make offers and ask for offers. Identify several issues or variables you and the other can play with. Use differences about time or risk, for example. Anchor with the first offer, a series of solutions on different variables, which creates much more value for you and hopefully for the other two. Ask the other to react to your offer, what they like or not on such or such variable, why and why not. The purpose here is to get information. Before making any counter offer, ask them to propose other solutions on the variables or even to add other variables they value. Third, as you move forward, remember the three Fs concerning offers. Flexibility, fluidity, and frequency. On each variable, imagine several options. Be flexible, not positional. Do not get stuck on one issue. Move from one variable to the next. And you may have to come back to the first one later. This will allow you to be fluid across issues. Avoid a final agreement on an issue until you reach an agreement on every issue. Finally, adjust the preferences. Use time to make frequent offers. Change solutions on one variable that is important to them, but also make another one more favorable to you. Use trade-offs. Fourth, propose different solutions equivalent for you. When you don't clearly grasp their underlying motivations or preferences. Propose two solutions that are as the same for you. For example, ask the other to pay 140 now or 100 now and 50 next month. You see, if you propose two or more solutions, it is possible the other will exclude one and qualify the other. Again, ask them why they don't like the first one and prefer the second one. This approach helps you get information from them and position the final set of solutions in a way that is both good for the two of you. Finally, look for post-settlements settlements. settlements. However much value you have succeeded in creating with the other, if you identify a possible deal, do not settle immediately. Agree with them that this will be the agreement except if both of you, by tweaking such or such an aspect, can get a better deal. 
Alain, why don't you tell us about how to maximize subjective value? There are four moves to maximize subjective value for everyone to be satisfied in negotiations. Some moves relate to the people. Every party needs to feel good about themselves and about the relationship. Some moves concern solutions to the problem. And the last series of moves have to do with the process. Let us start with moves fostering positive feelings for the self. Every party will feel good about themselves if they, one, save face, two, feel competent about the negotiation, about how they've acted in the negotiation, and behave appropriately according to the context. Let us foster good vibes with the relationship so that every party has good first impressions, builds trust, as well as a foundation for the future. Let us also craft a solution that looks beneficial for both, balanced, and based on legitimate criteria. Let us finally ensure the process is positively perceived, so that every party feels listened to, treated fairly, and that the process is neither too easy nor too hard. One final example about the staying power of subjective value. Graduates of a prestigious MBA program were invited to communicate the objective value they created during their recruitment interview, i.e. their salary package, and their subjective value according to the four dimensions we just outlined. One year later, a questionnaire was sent to ask if they were still working in the same place, if they had been happy with their package, and if they had the intention to stay. So what was discovered? That there was no correlation between the salary level and the three questions that we just asked, but on the contrary, if they were happy, had good feelings during the recruitment process, there was a correlation with the fact that they were pleased with their employer, happy with their employment package, and intended to continue to work there. Our responsible negotiation matrix summarizes such approach. Negotiation is not simply about transactional moves from problems to solutions to maximize objective value. It is also, and first, about relational moves in order to create a relationship, a connection, and a strong sense of self and trust with the other side. It requires process moves that put people first and are more likely to establish a sustainable partnership that will deliver on both subjective and objective value. In brief, the good news is that if you care about people, problems and process, you can maximize both objective and subjective value.